Good morning, Cyber Traders. Welcome back uh, for this lovely Thursday. How's everybody doing, everyone? Good to see you all. All right, good, good, good. Good morning. All right, guys, so it looks like we're having a pretty exciting morning so far. There's a lot of good stocks that are moving. Uh, the the G dot is just phenomenal. Uh, the stock is moving really, really nicely. Great short and pre-market. We'll talk a little bit about it. Uh, but just give you guys all a heads up before we begin. Or don't forget, today is uh, open house day, so Thursday at 12 o'clock. For all of you, just to remind you that uh, you know this is the best time to actually do these events. So we're going to invite a bunch of people. And uh, every week we do open house, so make sure you guys are all there. And also, remember, the best part about coming open house, too, is reading the questions. You know, remember, we were there once in our lives, and like I told everybody, you know, once we make a lot of money, just come out there and tell everyone how well you're doing. So we'll look forward to seeing you all there. All right. In the meantime, guys, listen, today, I'll tell you, last night at After Hours, who was here After Hours? Who was here After Hours uh, after the close when we did the closing, uh, we did uh, the afternoon meeting? I was, I was, I was like, I, Josh was doing the meeting, and all of a sudden, I was like on a rampage. I'm like, I'm like, yes, Uber just took off, and what the hell happened to Lyft? Holy cow! L Y F T. Let me bring that up right here. Lyft just literally went bonkers, just right out of the gate. The stock went from sixty to sixty-eight in like literally. This is wrong, actually. This is a three-minute chart. You gotta look at a one-minute chart. Um, can't really see. Two minute chart. Yeah, there you go. So literally, like in one minute, it just took off, and then from nowhere, it tanked. Literally, at at four thirty, it dropped all the way below where it was, but then it came right back. You know, it is up about seven percent right now. Now, um, who has actually Uber with me? Who bought Uber? I forgot who uh, one of you did. One of the ladies bought it. One of the fellow ladies bought it. Uber is holding it with me. Casey, you have it? I think you had it, right? You sold it, Casey? Where would you get out, Casey? I still have it. I didn't sell it. I got nervous. The thing dropped. I'm here. I was up, I was up about like 3200 in Uber, and then all of a sudden, because I owned it at thirty eight. And with Josh, I'm like, look, I'm up like I'm over, over three thousand. All of a sudden, I'm like down to like a thousand profit. I'm like, damn it, should I sell it? I'm like, you know what? It's at support levels, you know, at thirty nine fifty. I mean, what am I gonna do? So I held on to it, and good thing I did. But things pushing up pretty nicely. So um, I think Uber comes out with earnings today. You're in, Michael, at forty one. All right, listen, you know, guys, you always gotta remember that, fellow traders. You can't always look at it and be like, oh, but he owns it cheaper than me. Listen, if the thing goes to 47, 41 is still cheap. Right, Michael? It's still cheap. All right. So anyway, those two big stocks right now um, on a swing trade actually done well. Now, guys, uh, fellow traders, I always say this all the time. We te I teach you this in class. Being a good day trader, we don't hold overnights. But time to time, when it's done into design, not because you don't want to take a loss, but it was done to design. I'm like, you know what? I had a goal to hold this because it was at a major, major support level at 38. I'm like, you know what? We, I, you know, and you know what? We sold this at 45. 45 about a week ago. We, we would have got crushed if we didn't get out of it. And I, what do I always say? I love the company. I'll just buy it cheaper. That's all. I'll just buy it cheaper. Is there something wrong with that? And sure enough, it didn't do what I said. It did exactly what I said. And hopefully a lot of you get it. Now, listen, every single one has to learn. The, 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 the big thing about trading is great traders never stop learning. Okay? So we always learn and get better at it and better at it and better at it. And trust me, they're there every day. Right, Ben? Right, Michael? Right, Ken? Right, Mark? Lita? Andrea? But they, they're here all the time. So don't look at it. You missed this one. You missed that one. Because let me tell you something. I was just going through my list this morning. Holy cow. We got a big list. I am shocked. I got literally more than I can chew on. I think we got like almost like over 10, 15 stocks. So let's start off with them. So we know Uber's on the list. We know Lyft is on the list. What about Roku? I know it's a little bit on the expensive side, but Roku's doing pretty damn well. Uh, oops, spelled it wrong. R-O-K-U. The fat fingers going on on my on my keyboard. 
Uh, Roku took off. Roku's been on a huge run since since the beginning of the year. The stock was thirty dollars. This thing has been a great swing trade. It's at one hundred and eighteen. All right, but look after hours. What happened? One hundred and two to one hundred and fourteen. Another ten dollar winner. You know, nice big mover. Now, once again, I know, you know, ninety percent of us in this room do not trade stocks over fifty, but we do have the selective ones that do make a half a million, a million a year, and this is pretty much up your alley. So, you know, listen, when you eventually a lot of us will get to that league, you know, just within time and patience, but for those, some of you are, this is right up your alley. Now, let's talk about the pot stocks. Let's go on to pot stocks. Uh, NBEV, that one's moving. I got this one on my watch list. Uh, NBEV, you could see it yesterday. I had a really nice little trend going up. And it gapped up pretty nicely. The you know, stock obviously took a big hit. A lot of it has to do with Crohn's, C-R-O-N. I was a big fan of that stock a long time ago. Good thing I sold it. I think we traded Crohn's uh, in January, if you remember. We were trading at like 15, 16. We chased it. And it went all the way to four, uh, 24. I think we all got out around like 22, 21. Dropped all the way down to 12. But anyway, she's, uh, she's gapped up pretty nicely. That one's doing pretty well. And uh, I think we had the, it was it the ACB... Uh, a A C B C something like that. That one was moving also, but um, let's look at some other ones that also do, are moving pretty nicely too. This morning, there's a lot of them moving this morning. Uh, here's a nice little cheapy for some of you. The I N F N. This one's gapping up pretty nicely, up ten percent, hundred and two thousand shares. You got a nice little ten thousand share seller on level three right there at four fifty. So there you go. We got some resistance levels. No wonder why it's having a tough time breaking it. But it looks like uh, it's that's basically the resistance levels. Cheap low stock, level one traders. This is right up your alley. What else we got? AMD, another one. AMD, we were trading all day yesterday. AMD was doing pretty awesome. AMD took a huge hit from 34 down to 28. Look where it is, right back that up to 31. Stop really, uh, really strong. Guys, you know, we had that we had that correction in the market with that whole China. You got to love the volatility in the market. I mean, come on, guys. You got to admit it. All right. All this camaraderie uh tariff fighting and this and that is just literally just making it so much fun to trade so you got a b you got a, also you got h e b that's also moving this morning throw that one on the watch list uh that one right there it's on a little bit of, it gapped up but i don't know, I don't know maybe i'm going to change my mind on this one she started to back down but the stock was at a 14 dollars price range you could see the stock took a major hit uh, at two dollars, you know, I'm like, you know what? I saw a little bit of a Fausto flag there, so maybe it's going to gap up. You know, maybe, maybe this is the time it's going to recover after taking such a big hit. So, well, that that one looks pretty interesting. We'll keep an eye on that one. Uh, what else we got? H U N. This one's gapped up pretty nicely too. This one was at 18. Now it's at 21. Stocks up really, really nice. Not a lot of big orders, but look at this. You got a 33,000 share buyer sitting here, you know, at 2120. I don't know. Read between the lines. What, what does that tell you? Okay. <laughs> Do I need to spell it out any, any more than that? So in, the big winner a lot of you guys are doing, and this is actually was probably the best trade in pre-market, is the GDOT. Now, GDOT, um, you know, this is the one I found at 8 o'clock this morning. Stock got crushed. Um, if you hear 8 o'clock this morning... 8.10, 8.15, maybe, you know, 8.30 is when you, get, when you get the program trading kicking in. You should have all got in right around 28. But right now it's at 25. You got a $3 win right there. Great, great, great trade. But, you know, you short 1,000 shares of that. You do make money. And by the way, guys, remember one thing. Whatever goes up, comes down twice as fast. All right? So we make a lot of money shorting. I don't know why people are so petrified of shorting. Other than maybe you're trading in your IRA because they won't allow it. But other than that, there's so much money to be made in shorting. I mean, they, sometimes I feel we don't short as much as we should, actually. I was, you know what's funny? I was talking to um, a friend of mine. Uh, his wife works at Schoenfeld Security. It's probably the largest prop firm in the, in the world uh, right here in Long Island, Schoenfeld Securities. And uh, she, all she does, she says 95% of, 90 of her trades are all short. That's all she does. She's the most negative woman I ever met in the market. All she wants to do is short, 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 short. <laughs> All right, another couple of big stocks are taking some big shorts too. CWH, this one took a big hit, 26, uh, 26%. 
You got not the craziest amount of orders out there, a uh, hundred, couple of hundreds, no big block orders, no iceberg orders, but she is on the downtrend. And then one last but not least, I want to throw this one up. Guys, remember st uh, st um, stamps.com? Stamps, look at that. Make a little bit of comeback. Remember we watched stamps getting crushed? We saw it when it gap from 200, went to 100. Yeah, okay. You know what? You want to be a big shot and you want to trade expensive stocks? How's that working out for you? Thought it was going to come back when it was at 90. Boom, wakes up. It's at 30. Remember that? Well, look at that. She's coming up a little bit. So, by the way, I don't know if anybody heard the news. Everybody heard the news on FedEx, what they said today? Big announcement on FedEx. And I'm really not affecting the stock too much. They actually pulled out and not doing any more deliveries for Amazon. I think I guess they feel like they're making too much of a superpower. They says we're only going to be working for other companies, no more Amazon. I'll tell you, that's pretty uh, pretty interesting news, you know, regarding about that. I wonder if uh, if uh, the postal service UPS is going to follow along with it. I mean, you, you, we all know that it's like Uber and and you heard about Amazon. They basically got robots starting to do deliveries. So eventually, they just you know you you're fueling somebody. It's going to replace your job. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Oh, just international, they said? Okay, well. Well, like I said, I, I, I listen, when you take an inch, all right, it's going to be a foot. Next thing you have a foot, it'll be a mile. So this could just be the start of the beginning, you know, of something that could end uh, pretty ugly. Anyway, if we can make money on it, let's trade it, right? That's all I could say. All right, guys, listen, you got a really big list here. Uh, oh, Ben says the Weight Watchers. Yeah, Weight Watchers obviously was a great run runner yesterday. We did really well early in the morning. That was, I forgot to mention that. But that stock alone, we, that was probably our biggest winner yesterday. Uh, went from 25 straight up to about 30. <laughs> you know, sometimes, guys, listen, just buy one stinking share of the stock. One share. Don't be afraid to chase it. If you feel like you're chasing it, you don't got to trade what you usually trade. Trade, you know, you know um, a fifth of it or a tenth of it. You know, if you're a thousand share trader, trade a hundred shares. But if you're not trading, you're never going to make money. You got to trade to learn, and you're not going to learn by trading on demo mode. All right, all right, guys. So uh, listen, big list, a lot of fun today. Taste Thursday, beautiful, beautiful day here in New York. I expect it to probably be. You know, a lot of people are going to leave for the weekend. Summer, could you believe it's almost over? This is scary. So anyway. Uh, I think a lot of people are going to really enjoy it. Actually, it's been a really nice summer. Nice weather for the first time in a long time. Nice and nice and dry. So I think a lot of people are probably going to be leaving early on Friday. So let's see if they're going to make a lot of money today. So anyone, good luck to everybody. I'll see you back at 12 o'clock. And then we'll see you back at 2.30 for the afternoon meeting. Good luck, everyone. Happy trading.